apostolic letter of both Francis and St. Francis of Sars, following The Criterion of Love By experience, Francis had come to realize that desire is at the root of all true spiritual life, but also the cause of its debasement. Drawing abundantly from the spiritual tradition that had preceded him, he recognized the importance of constantly testing desire through the exercise of discernment. He found the ultimate criterion for this assessment in love. In that final conference in Lyon, on the feast of St. Stephen, two days before his death, he had said, It is love that grants perfection to our works. I will tell you much more. Take a person who suffers martyrdom for God with an ounce of love. That person merits much, since he could give nothing greater than his own life. Yet, another person who has only suffered a scratch with two ounces of love will have much more merit because it is charity and love that give value to our works. With remarkable realism, Francis went on to speak of the complex relationship between contemplation and action. You know, or you should know, that contemplation is in itself better than activity and the active life. Nonetheless, if one finds greater union with God in the active life, then that is better. If a sister in the kitchen, holding a pan over the fire, has greater love and charity than another sister, that material fire will not hold her back, but instead help her to become more pleasing to God. It frequently happens that people are united to God as much in activity as in solitude. In the end, it always comes back to the question of where the greatest love is to be found. This, then, is the truly important thing, more important than any kind of useless rigidity of self-absorption. To keep asking at every moment, in every decision, in every situation in life, where the greatest love is to be found. Not by chance, St. John Paul II would call Francis de Sales the doctor of divine love. Not simply because he had written a weighty treatise on that subject, but first and foremost, because he was an outstanding witness to that love. His writings were no theory concocted behind a desk, far from the concerns of ordinary people. His teachings were the fruit of a great sensitivity to experience. He merely translated into doctrine what, enlightened by the Spirit, he had experienced and learned in the course of his remarkably innovative pastoral activity. We find it summed up in the preface of the treatise on the love of God. In Holy Church, everything pertains to love, lives in love, is done for love, and comes from love. Early Education, the Adventure of Coming to Know Oneself in God Francis was born on August the 21st of the year 1567 in the castle of Salle, near Torrance, the son of François de Nouvelle, Lord of Boisy, and Françoise de Sionnaz. 
His life spanned two centuries, the 16th and the 17th, and he embodied the best of the teachings and cult cultural achievements of the century, then drawing to a close, reconciling the inheritance of humanism with the striving for the absolute proper to the currents of mysticism. After his early education, first in the college of La Roche-sur-Foron, and then in that of Annecy, Francis went to Paris, to the recently founded Jesuit College of Clermont. In the capital of the Kingdom of France, devastated by the wars of religion, he experienced two consecutive interior crises that would have a lasting mark on his life. A fervent prayer offered in the church of saint Étienne de Grès before the Black Madonna of Paris would kindle amid the darkness of his heart a fire that would continue to burn within him and provide the key to understanding his own experience and that of others. Whatever may happen, Lord, you who hold everything in your hands and whose ways are all justice and truth, I will love you, Lord. I will love you here, O oh my God. I will hope always in your mercy and ever repeat your praise. O oh Lord Jesus, you will always be my hope and my salvation in the land of the living. Attaining peace, Francis recorded those words in his journal. The experience of this crisis with its anxiety and uncertainties would remain illuminating for him and provide him with a singular approach to the mystery of God's relationship with humanity. It helped him gain insight into the life of others and to recognize with a refined spirit of discernment the interior attitude that unites thought and feeling, reason and affections, which he called the God of the human heart. As a result, Francis was never in danger of attributing theoretical importance to his own personal experience and absolutizing it. Rather, he learned something remarkable, the fruit of grace, the ability to discern in God his own lived experience and that of others. Although he never claimed to develop a theological system as such, his reflection on the spiritual life proved to be of outstanding theological importance, for it embodied two essential dimensions of any genuine theology. The first is the spiritual life itself, for it is in humble and persevering prayer, in openness to the Holy Spirit, that we attempt to understand that and communicate the Word of God. Theologians emerge from the crucible of prayer. The second is the life of the Church, the ability to think in the Church and with the Church. Theology itself has left the effects of our individualist culture, yet Christian theologians are called to carry out their work immersed in the life of the community, breaking within it the bread of the Word. The thought of Francis de Sales, albeit on the margins of the scholarly disputes of his age and respectful of them, was characterized by these two essential dimensions. <laughs>